Our next uh, presenter, Mr. Rolando Pujol, Director of Digital and Social Strategy, WPIX-TV Channel 11, is going to talk to us a little bit about social media analytics and content strategy. Mr. Pujol. All right. Thank you. Okay, uh, my name is Rolando Pujol. I'm the Director of Digital and Social at WPIX TV, Channel 11. Pix 11 News is our brand. I've been there for about five years. And uh, it's a very interesting place to work because uh, we find ourselves uh, right now, TV stations and uh, of course newspapers and all mass media that's supported by traditional advertising at, a, at interesting cross currents right now. And uh, for us, uh, a, you know, our future relies heavily on, on digital and social and on really using those platforms effectively. And that can be a real challenge when you are a legacy news organization. You've been doing things one way. In our case, we went on the air June 15, 1948. So we are a very you know, legacy organization with a long, rich history. And we're very good at television and, and sort of linear. But uh, figuring out digital and social has been a challenge, but we've made some progress. And one of the key tools in making progress and is using analytics, because analytics give us great, great insight into audience and into how to engage with people, how to reach them, how to find them, how to inform them. So I'll take you through some of what we do uh, in this presentation. Let's go back to the days of your um, AC Nielsen company. Um, they, of course, provide, and to this day, provide the ratings for, for television. And uh, in the old days, uh, the way that Channel 11 and any channel or newspaper or channel or network uh, find out how they did was to wait for the ratings. I mean, if you were a diary market, uh, you had to wait until results from the diaries that people kept came in. Uh, if you had an, uh, uh, an overnight you were in a larger overnight market. You had to wait till the morning to see how you did. And in fact, that's still the case. Uh, every morning, I check my email around 6 a.m. I get an, e an email with the ratings for the New York City market. And it's really fascinating. So I immediately go, my main interest is how our newscasts do. So I'll go there and see how our newscasts did. I'm less interested in household and more interested in demographics, in particular uh, 25 to 54, because that is the most coveted uh, demographic among advertisers. We all want to reach people in that group. And how we do there determines our future. Okay, so newspapers, of course, uh, for them, um, and to this day, it's still circulation. That's really gave you a sense for you know, how, you, how you were doing with the audience. If you had a special you know, uh, cover story on Sunday that you promoted during the week, did you see a pop in circulation? Could you, could, could you then continue to build on that momentum? Uh, it was all about circulation and sales and, and subscriptions. Um, but what's missing from this model, and this model, of course, is immediacy. Now we know right away in the digital world precisely um, what is happening. And we now live in a world where the audience comes first. So uh, just the facts, instant analytics. In digital, we obtain instant information in real time about our audience. We know precisely what the audience is consuming, how many people uh, are consuming it, where they're coming from. We have key demographics. Uh, I can very quickly call up a screen and know precisely how many people are on the site, where they're from, um, we can get demographic information that we can share with advertisers. Our Facebook page is very popular with men ages 25 to 34, for example. Uh, we know where they are coming from geographically. We know how we reach them. We know whether we're doing well on social because we're getting a lot of traffic from Facebook or whether it's because our story is doing very well on SEO. So we're getting a lot of uh, Google traffic. We can easily then fine tune um, our digital offerings to a wider audience or cater to a specific kind of audience because we can use this information not simply to to learn something hey this is kind of cool we've got this many people and they're coming from here but then we can take that information and start to make some strategic um, decisions and this is where it gets interesting uh, there was a study that Reuters did back last year on the role of analytics in newsrooms and concluded that a successful strategy depends on the following the right set of tools, meaning do we have the right tools to measure um, 
analytics. And uh, we'll talk about some of those tools in a moment. Uh, an organizational structure uh, that incorporates the expertise to use them. In other words, people who know what they're doing, people who know how to use Google Analytics and Chartbeat and uh, some of these other tools that we have and can interpret that data in a way that's useful to the organization. And finally, a newsroom culture that embraces data-informed decision-making. Falling short in any of these areas undermines an organization's analytics capability. Um, that same Reuters report found that the use of analytics must be and this is very important, aligned with the editorial priorities and organizations uh, and organizational imperatives of specific news organizations used to inform both short-term day-to-day decisions and long-term strategic development and continually evolving to keep pace with a changing media environment. So you know, how are we using this data? To what end? To what purpose? Does it help our organization? Does it grow our brand? Um, what are we doing it for? So the key to what we do uh, every day and to you know, how we interpret data is Google Analytics. Perhaps, and who's used Google Analytics here uh, on a website? Or Okay, some of you are familiar with, with this very powerful tool. Um, it provides the most sophisticated levels of data. I like to compare it to like a rushing nesting doll where you can just keep going down and down and down, but one that never ends. I mean, you can get so much information about your audience and the content that's being consumed on your site. So this is a screen grab from a couple of days ago of our website on a kind of a quiet morning. We, we didn't have a lot of, particularly a great amount of traffic at this time. About 715 people were on the site. Um, and I point out there with the arrow what the top story was at the time. Go right in there. There were 52 people in that story. And it told you where those people were coming from. So we can use this kind of data to make informed decisions. If a story is coming largely from Google, um, that's interesting. We know there's a wider interest in that story. And if the Google traffic is going up, then we know there's certain things that we need to do to um, work on, massage that story so that it stays on, in the search engine, so that it stays in Google News. Uh, update the headline when it, it requires that. Keep, continue to grow the story so that Google keeps getting these pings that, you know, this is the story that's important that we're updating. They've already recognized it as important so we can do more with it. If it's falling short, um, on Facebook, and there it was falling short on Facebook. There were only two people uh, in that story from Facebook. Why is that? Is it a, a bad Facebook post? Yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, no, I was just giving the time cue. Oh, I see. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Five minutes? Okay. Um, and even deeper, more insightful dives. Um, so as you can see, you can go really in there, find out traffic sources, find out um, all kinds of data about um, your audience. We use Chartbeat too, and it gives us a bigger picture view. What you're seeing here is um, an overview of traffic on all the Tribune Media websites. Uh, Channel 11 is owned by Tribune Media, which is based in Chicago. We have 42 stations across the country. Chartbeat uh, can be used in a variety of ways, but these are the stories that are getting the highest degrees of good interaction on all the Tribune websites. So we know how many people are lingering for more than a few seconds in a story. These are people who aren't just coming in and out, but they're actually staying. So for us, the fact that people are, are lingering in a story is insightful because it shows us that it's a good popular story. So I can look at this screen and then make some decisions about what uh, I want to put on my site. If the story is trending for KTLA or KF KFOR in Oklahoma City, and I think it might have some value in New York, I can take their story, repurpose it for my market, put it on my Facebook and see how it does. So this is how we discover content. Video is incredibly important too. And uh, we use analytics uh, from how stories are doing on the website to decide which stories get videos and how quickly those stories get video. If we have, um, and I'll give you an example of a, the point the doctor made, which is uh, the hot felon, uh, Jeremy Meeks, uh, that story was incredibly explosive for like virtually every news organization that, that, that played it. And for us, that, we put it up and it was just doing immediately terrific traffic. It was getting tons of shares and likes and comments. We didn't have a video in that story. You get the, the highest return on your investment on digital with video, the highest CPMs. We can charge the most for for views on video. So we immediately whipped together a quick video to say, this this guy, he's, he's uh, He's, we're calling, they're calling him the hot felon. He's got a little teardrop uh, you know, tattoo on his face, and people think he's just the best. And, and that video did it very well for us, as did the story. So that was, an, that was looking at 
performance on our site and deciding how can we most maximize the impact of that performance. Uh, and that for us is, is getting a video up quickly. Um, we measure social performance in a variety of ways. We have two tools that we rely on. One is called ShareRocket, which is a third party software that gives us access to the performance of every social media account in the New York TV market. We can measure anything that's that's a public, that's a page, that's a Twitter account, that's an, that's an open Instagram account. And that gives us great insight, market by market, not only in New York, but across the country, about what's working. So we, here you can see a live view from a few days ago of what the top stories were. Fox 5 had a few up there, then we were there, Channel 7 had some. Some of the reporters for the stations had some, and this gives us a real insight for what's working with audience. And we can we can might see something on Channel Five site that it intrigues us that we had missed, and decide whether that's right for us, or we could go and look at Chicago's uh, analytics and say, hey, we haven't seen this story yet in the New York market. This might have some applicability to us. Um, another important tool that we use is. Uh, CrowdTangle, and another one called Spike. And these are content discovery tools uh, that tell us what's happening around the country. So we can tell which stories are emerging by a variety of, of um, factors, mainly geographic. So I, if I want to see what's happening in Florida and what the trending stories are in Florida for the past two hours or past two days, uh, I can go right in here and find that data out. And of course, Florida is a hotbed for amazing and terrific viral news. Uh, there's a, there was a whole Tumblr that uh, was, I believe, called Florida Man, because every story that's going to have a wacky ending begins with a Florida man yesterday. Finish it. So, no, I love Florida, by the way. No, no, don't mean to focus on Florida too much. Anyway, so what do we do with all this data? Uh, Uncle Ben comes to the rescue here. With great power comes great responsibility. Uh, we can take all this data. We can take all this data and uh, and use it in a way that basically you know it, it's 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 basically traffic first and getting as many views first and, and and monetization above everything else. Or we can use it insightfully to inform our audience about stories that we know they need to know and perhaps would enjoy to know, um, but that don't necessarily. Uh, but then we can do a great deal with, with, with that. So let's look at uh, some of the takeaways here. Growth. By understanding what audience is consuming in real time in our sites and, other, and, and others, we get insights in, into how to super serve them and maximize traffic. By matching videos to high traffic stories, we stand to grow our immediate revenue stream in the most powerful way. By keen understanding of demographics, we can build tailor-made ad campaigns as well. Um, being smart in social media builds brand awareness and, and we can cultivate our brand and use it to push to television and back to digital, growing all platforms and ultimately social responsibility. Using this data while keeping in mind that what we stand for, who, what we're about, what we believe the audience needs to know versus what it wants to know more about. That constant struggle is never more real than in, uh, in the digital space. So it's using that, that data uh, in intelli intelligently in a way that, that helps your brand and grows your brand, doesn't cheapen it by simply um, trying to get traffic for the sake of traffic. And that's really what we're, a lot of news organizations are coping with today. You'll see major news, plays, uh, news organizations posting stories that are often wrong, that are often fake, because they're simply trending, and they haven't done the proper amount of vetting. And that is a, a serious risk for, for journalism today. So that's my presentation. Uh, this is how you can reach out to me if you have any further questions. Uh, and thanks a lot for your time. Great.